Teresa, and welcome back to Asian News. At least 70 people dead at Indonesia floats this week. The country's National Disaster Agency says at least 70 people were killed in flash floods and landslides in a cluster of islands of southeast Indonesia. Local officials say that 40 people remain missing and the death toll could rise to over 100. Pictures supplied by the local disaster management agency in Lembata, one of the worst hit areas, shows destroyed buildings and debris left by the floods. In a televised address, Indonesia's President Joko Widodo expresses deep sorrow for the victims of the disaster and reminded citizens to increase awareness for floods and landslides during extreme rainfall. The Soroja cyclone, which triggers the floods, hit southwest Timor Island. Indonesia's weather agency says, warning that it could bring yet more rain, waves and winds. Authorities evacuate thousands of people affected by Cyclone Seroja after floods in Indonesia. Indonesian authorities are racing to evacuate thousands of people who have been driven from their homes following floods and landslides triggered by Cyclone Seroja. The country's disaster agency, BNPB, says in a news conference the storm has killed at least 68 people and another 70 people are missing. BNPB says several bridges collapsed, trees fell and blocked some roads in Indonesia and at least one ship sank in high waves triggered by the cyclone, complicating search and rescue operations. One evacuee in Malacca says her family stayed on the roof for a night before being evacuated. Dozens of others are waiting to be evacuated by boats and trucks. The agency says within the next 24 hours, the cyclone's intensity could strengthen, bringing yet more rain, waves and winds, although it was moving away from Indonesia. China and Singapore will maintain closer bilateral bonds amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, during meetings with his Singaporean counterparts, involved in discussions and sharing ideas to enhance their bilateral ties. China and Singapore share many things in common, such as language and culture, making their relationship different from any other in the world. The two countries established diplomatic relations in 1990. Economic and trade cooperation has been developed rapidly since then. According to the data from the Chinese Foreign Ministry and Singapore's Department of Statistics, all Chinese exports to Singapore and 95% of Singapore's exports to China enjoy zero tariffs under a free trade agreement. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying announces that the invitation of Wang Yi, the foreign ministers of Malaysia, Indonesia and the Philippines, will be visiting China in the coming few days following the visit of Balakrishnan. On 2021 marks 30 years since the establishment of dialogue relations between China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The meetings come as the two sides all look to maintaining closer relations through the pandemic. China and Malaysia discuss their cooperation and future strong friendship. China and Malaysia vowed to strengthen bilateral ties as Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with his Malaysian counterpart Hishamuddin Hussein in Anpin City of East China's Fujian province. The two ministers discussed a range of regional and international issues of mutual concern, including the post-pandemic agenda, vaccine cooperation and bilateral trade. Bilateral relations between China and Malaysia have grown steadily. China remained as Malaysia's biggest trading partner for 12 consecutive years. More than 21% of Malaysia's total imports, which value about 41 billion United States dollars, come from China in 2020. The Malaysian Foreign Minister is among four foreign ministers from Southeast Asian nations to visit China at the invitation of Wang Yi. Capital of Cambodia enters to wake curfew COVID-19.
a two-week curfew begin in the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh to contain the spread of COVID-19. People are barred from traveling into or out of the city between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., except in certain cases. Some people rush us to buy food and drinks before the curfew, which will force vendors to give up trading over long hours and pack up before 8 p.m. A resident says Cambodian people must take part in respecting the rule set up by the government and if they don't do so, then the virus will spread uncontrollably. Cambodia started its vaccination program last month. Hundreds of Cambodians factory workers received China's Sinovac vaccine. A Cambodian national campaign to get hundreds of thousands of factory workers vaccinated against the coronavirus as government workers receive their first dose of the vaccine at an industrial park in Phnom Penh. Hundreds of workers line up outside their respective factories at Canadia Industrial Park waiting to register and receive Chinese Sinovac vaccine. According to a Labour Ministry official, at least 400,000 garment workers are slated to get the COVID-19 jabs in Phnom Penh. Cambodia had one of the worst, smallest coronavirus case loads until six weeks ago, but an outbreak in late February had led to its first 22 COVID-19 deaths and a five-fold jump in cases to 2,824. Children and students participating in protests after hundreds of people were captured and killed by the military in Myanmar. Demonstrators of children and university students take to the streets to protest in Myanmar's southern city of Dawe as the number of people arrested and killed continue to rise following a crackdown on opposition towards a military coup in February. Video filmed by local news outlet Dawe Watch shows villagers marching at dawn in Langlong Township. In a separate march, children holding flowers and chanting slogans. University students are joined by other protesters in Dawe in another march. Myanmar's military has cut wireless broadband and mobile data service, essentially shutting off most of Myanmar's citizens from internet access, though some messages and pictures were still able to be shared. The Assistant Association for Political Prisoners, an activist group, monitoring casualties and arrests since the coup that 557 people had been killed since the coup in February, with two more people in detention. A fire engulfs the top floor of a commercial building in the Philippines. A video at the scene shows a fire engulfs the top floors of a commercial building in the Philippines before the blaze was quelled. Footage from the scene taken when the fire is still raging shows the black smoke blowing from the tall building. Firefighters put out the fire by 4 p.m. local time and officials are investigating the cause of the blaze. The building is located in Makati, the country's major financial hub. Chinese President sends a message of congratulation to Nguyen Xuanpok on his election's victory as the new president of Vietnam. Chinese President Xi Jinping sends a message of congratulations to Nguyen Xuanpok on his election victory as the president of Vietnamese state. In his message, she points out that China and Vietnam are socialist neighbors linked by mountains and rivers. The two countries have helped each other and together made major achievements in the COVID-19 pandemic prevention and control last year. She stresses China and Vietnam relations because of a socialist construction have entered a crucial stage of inheriting the past and ushering in the future. On the same day, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang also sent a congratulatory message to Pan min on his election as a Vietnamese Prime Minister. Li says he stands ready to work with his Vietnamese counterpart to steadily promote the synergy of the two countries' development strategies and all-round cooperation in the future. 
At least five people death after building collapsed in Bangkok. <laughs> At least five people are killed, including one resident and four firefighters, when a residential building on the outskirts of Bangkok collapsed. The moment of the deadly collapse is captured on an action camera by a local firefighters at the scene. The rescue team says they heard a sound of something break and the whole building came down within split seconds. The three-story structure caught fire at the 6 a.m. local time. The cause of the fire remains unknown. Rescue efforts are held in the evening after no signs of possible life were detected. And thank you for watching. Please wash your hands, use your mask, and maintain social distancing role, and have a nice weekend.